happy Friday, everyone. Welcome back to Ramadan for you, TV. I'm Zainab Hafsa. And I'm Isan Yuja. And it is already the 12th day of Ramadan. Can you believe it? Time's fl- time flies. Looks Absolutely. Sorry, Today, Zikir is a reminder that Allah always loves us and with us. We can also recite this Zikir to grow our Iman. Let's learn more about it. Welcome back, my dear friends. We hope you're all enjoying your Ramadan and practicing the daily dhikrs with us every day. Today, we have a really important dhikr. Ya Wadud Ya Allah. We can break the dhikr down by understanding that Allah is Al Wadud, which means He is the most loving or most affectionate. So, when we look at all together, we can understand that this dhikr can focus on the attributes of Allah. When we say this dua, we can see Allah's boundless love for His creation. Ya Wadud Ya Allah can be said when we need Allah's forgiveness, assistance, and when we want to grow our Iman. This dhikr can also grow someone's connection with Allah, as we say Ya Wadud Ya Allah. We are repeating, O most loving, O Allah. We turn to Allah with all of our hardships, and this dhikr can bring ease to us when we want guidance from Allah. The dhikr can make our faith stronger as we reassure the love and care that Allah has for us. Inshallah, the more we say this dhikr, Allah can bring ease and guidance to our hardships and we can all achieve a level of closeness to Allah with this dhikr. Now, my dear friends, do not forget to say Ya Wadud Ya Allah to remember that Allah always loves us and that He is always with us. You can say this dhikr as many times as you like whenever you need it. For today, we want you to say a hundred times. Dhikr is recited, feeling blessed, slumber tight, awake refreshed. Sorry about that, everybody. It seems we ran into some technical difficulties earlier, but everything is fixed now. Just to recap, Vedud means the most loving and is used to characterize Allah's eternal love for us. So by reciting this thicker, you can show your love back and gratefulness to Allah. I know you all love Allah so much and surely surely want to recite this thicker a lot. Today, our goal is to repeat the zikir 27,000 times together. Next, we have another way of showing our love to Allah, which is daily dua. Let's start. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min fitnati dunya wal qabri wal musaid. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the trials of this world, the Antichrist, and tribulations. Ya Rabbi, the world is filled with temptations and distractions. Grant me the strength to resist the allure of desire, the worldly desires and focus on what truly matters. Guide me to navigate life's challenges with faith and resilience. Help me overcome hardship and emerge from difficult situations stronger and more determined. Protect me from the trials that may lead me astray. Ya Rabbi, grant me the wisdom to discern your will and the courage to follow it, even when it feels difficult. Remind me that this life is temporary, and the life and the true reward lies in the hereafter. May I live a life that is pleasing to you and prepares me for the eternal life to come. Amen. Asking Allah to remind us that this life is temporary is a beautiful job. The Quran says hereafter is a better for you than the first life. Now we have Ramadan Corners.
I personally like the banners on the sides. It gave this very castle-esque kind of feeling to it, like a gate of a castle, if you know what I'm talking about. Next up, let's see what's on the menu with Ramadan Cuisine. My name is Fatma. My name is Nusha. Today we're gonna make a banana. We have onions. We have two tomatoes. We have pepper. And we have some eggs. And we have some cheese. And we have some oil. Cut them to small pieces. Now we're gonna pour some oil into the pan and pour it. Now we're cut the onions and putting inside. Now we're gonna quick mix them. Then. Now we're going to get ready to pepper. Mm, it smells yummy. Now, I'm going to put the peppers into the pan. Now, we're going to get the tomatoes and cut them. Now we are ready to put the tomatoes into the pan. Is it ready for the eggs? Yes! Now we're mixing the eggs. I think you need some salt. cheese. Now we're putting, now we're putting the cheese and now we mix them up. Enjoy, Enjoy your minimum. Bismillah. Bismillah. Thank you Fatma and Nusham for teaching us how to make menemen. I'm pretty sure it's delicious because you use onions. I have a big I have an important question for you guys. Are you ready? Do you guys prefer to eat menemen with onions or without it? You can write your answers to the chat. Next we will be learning about Prophet Yusuf Prophet Yusuf Salam.
Hi, I'm Talha, and today we will be taking a look at chapter 4 of Hazrat Yusuf Alayhisalam's life. In this chapter, we will be taking a look at Hazrat Yusuf's wisdom and being given prophethood as well as the fitna of Egyptian women. <laughs> Yusuf's beauty and his behavior attracted Zuleyha's attention, as did everyone else's attention. Zuleyha, Al-Aziz's wife, who watched Yusuf day after day, began to feel passionately about him. Her obsession heightened to a degree where she was desperate to fulfill her desire. One day, when her husband was far away from home, she closed the doors and invited Yusuf to her. Yusuf, fearing Allah, replied, I seek refuge in Allah. Indeed, he is my master who has made good my residence. Indeed, wrongdoers will not succeed. He turned away and ran towards the closed door to escape. Zuleyha chased him after in desperation and grabbed his shirt from the back, which caused his shirt to rip. The door opened and Al-Aziz entered. Ashamed, she ran to him and cried, What is the recompense of the one who intended evil for your wife, but that he be imprisoned or a painful punishment? Yusuf was baffled. He continued to deny his mistress's claim, saying, It was she who sought to seduce me. Al-Aziz was a fair man. He was confused and unsure of whom to believe, so he consulted his wife's cousin for advice. If his shirt's torn from the front, then she has told the truth, and he is one of the liars, advised the cousin. Thus, Yusuf's innocence was proven. Al-Aziz apologized for his wife's indecency and swore Yusuf to secrecy. Although Yusuf swore secrecy and remained silent, this gossip was being talked about among Egyptian women. Egyptian women condemned Zuleyha's desire for her slave. This incident that Zuleyha experienced was widely spread among Egyptians. When other women started making fun of her character, Zuleyha could not stand it and felt the need to explain herself. Distressed, Zuleyha planned to prove to them her helpless reaction to Yusuf's extraordinary handsomeness. That's why she invited these women to a banquet at her residence one day. There, she served them fruit along with knives. When the women were happily chatting away while slicing fruits, Zuleyha summoned Yusuf. The women looked up at him. Astonished at such angelic beauty, they cut their hands without even realizing they had. Zuleyha seized the moment to announce that this was the man for whom she was blamed. With that, Zuleyha proved to all the Egyptians that Yusuf possessed extraordinary beauty and had a truly special face and personality.
this part of Hazrat Yusuf Alayhi life shows us that no matter how inescapable of a situation you're in, if you're in the righteous and if you're doing the right thing, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help guide you. Also, we've hit like halfway for our dhikr goal, so good job on that. Next, let's learn about the Quran in Ramadan Dictionary. This is Sami. This is Lily. Together, we will explore new words with Ramadan Dictionary. Welcome, everyone. Today, we will be exploring the letter Q for Quran. Lily, every night before bed, we read the Quran. Why, Sammy? Because it's my favorite book. You know what my dad says? What? The Quran was given to our beloved Prophet to teach and show us what is best. So, it's like a gift from Allah, a guide for our hearts. Exactly. We read it, and it fills our souls with light. So you read the Quran and pray every night? Yes, I do that with my dad, and when I finish reading, I hug my dad, then fall asleep. The Quran, a treasure sent to us by Allah. May its wisdom guide us always. It's really important to learn the Quran. Pro Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, the best of you are those who learn the Qur'an and teach it. Also, there is an ayat in Surah Al-Anam. The guidance of Allah is the only guidance. Now we have a splash of faith. Yo, what up Ramadan TV? <laughs> I'm going to tell, give you guys options. <laughs> Don't press the button before I finish the question, okay? Please just... Okay, first question. Where do Muslims face when they pray? Sajjah. Uh, you can cut his. Okay. How old was Hazrat Muhammad وسلم, when he became a prophet? 20. No, you can cut his. He was 40 years old. You can get up and cut it. Okay. Who is the first prophet? Yes, you can cut one more. <laughs> Don't uh, yeah, cut that one. Yeah, cut that one. Okay. What is the name of our prophet's first wife? Correct. Okay, go, go to the other side. <laughs> Don't go back. Okay, no, open the open the scissor a little bit. Oh, uh, hold it with like open it up a little bit more. Huh, hold it. Huh. Now you can pop it. Hope you brought an extra shirt. These splash of faith videos always get really messy. Now we will learn about Masjid Al-Aqsa, which is the first Qibla. According to Abu Dahar anhu, when he asked the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him what the first mosque placed on earth was, he said Masjid Al-Haram. Then he asked what is the next one and the Prophet peace be upon him replied Masjid Al-Aqsa. Masjid al-Aqsa is a silver-domed mosque inside a 35-acre compound, which Muslims refer to as Haram al-Sharif and the Jews refer to as Temple Mount located in the old city of Quds. Masjid al-Aqsa's location and planning started with Prophet Dawud. However, the masjid was built by Prophet Suleiman. Later, the masjid was restored by Prophet Noah and Prophet Yaqub. Masjid al-Aqsa has an important place in both Islam and other Abrahamic religions. Masjid al-Aqsa was a residence of prophets, place of divine revelation, and temple of righteous people. Allah Almighty declared it blessed because the miracles of most of the prophets took place there. Masjid al-Aqsa is important in Islam because it was the Qibla in the first years of Islam, regardless of the Kaaba being the first house built for worship. 
Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him performed his prayers by turning towards Masjid al-Aqsa for 16 or 17 months until Allah ordered the Prophet to turn to the Kaaba in Surah Baqarah. It is necessary to turn to the Qibra that Allah orders to. He ordered some Ummas to turn to the Kaaba while he ordered others to turn to Masjid al-Aqsa. One of the reasons why Islam values Masjid al-Aqsa is that it's Islam's third holiest site next to the Dome of Rock where Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him ascended to heaven during his Miraj. In the first verse of Surah Al-Isra, Allah Almighty states, Glory to Allah, who did take his servant for a journey by night from the sacred mosque to the farthest mosque, whose precincts we did bless, in order that we might show him some of our signs, for he is the one who heareth and seeth all things. When the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was elevated to the sky, there was not a mosque like the one today in Quds. However, there were ruins of Masjid al-Aqsa and it was called the Bayt al-Maqdis. That was the place that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, visited. In the hadith, the Prophet peace be upon him stated, I mounted Burak. I arrived at Bayt al-Maqdis, which indicates the Quds and the places around it. It is stated in some historical sources that Quds was destroyed in 70 AD, but the ruins of Bayt al-Maqdis were kept to worship. The wall that is called the Wailing Wall by Jews and the Burak Wall by Muslims were the remnants of Bayt al-Maqdis. In 638 AD, Masjid al-Aqsa was built in the place of Bayt al-Maqdis after Quds was conquered during the Caliphate of Hazrat Umar. The reason why Hazrat Umar built the mosque was the holiness and importance of that place. Masjid Aqsa is located in Kudus and it is the third most important mosque. Get your notes ready because it's Kahoot time. Good luck everyone!
Marcos? Our code is 2781593 and we will about we will start. Alright guys, if you're all ready, we're starting. Let's go with the first question. Three, two, one. Where do we face when we pray? The nearest mosque, Sejda, anywhere, Kaaba. The correct answer is Kabe. Let's go to scoreboard. Naji is the first place, Patoshi is the second, Emin is the third, Meli is the fourth, and Ronaldo is the fifth. Let's continue the second question. What is the name of Prophet Muhammad's first wife? Hafsa, Hatije, Zainab, Safiya. Correct answer is Hazrat Hatije. Our scoreboard is changed. Patoshi is the first place, Suleiman is the second, Yasemin is the third, Rumeisa is the fourth, and Harun is the fifth. Third question What is the zikir of day? Ya Rahim Ya Allah, Ya Latif Ya Allah, Ya Vedut Ya Allah, Ya Aziz Ya Allah. Yes, Ya Vedut Ya Allah is the correct answer. We recite this zikr when we want to show our love to Allah. Fatush is the first place, Suleiman is in the second, Wehbi Chokavji is the third, Rumeisa is the fourth, and Naji is the fifth. What decorations were used in today's Ramadan corner? Balloons, flowers, paintings, lanterns. Balloons are the correct answer. Rehbi Chokavji is in the first place, Rumeisa is the second, Hilm is the third, Esti is the fourth, and Ahmo is the fifth. Let's continue. True or false? Does al Vedut mean the most merciful? True or false? It is false. Rehbi Chokavji is in the first place, Hilm is the second, Esti is the third, K. Janet is the fourth, and Burhan Demir is the fifth. Let's continue with question number six. What was today's word in Ramadan dictionary? Qibla, Quran, Prophet, Ramadan. The correct answer was our holy book Quran. Let's continue. Rehbi Chokavja is in the first place, Amara is the second, Nargis is the third, Leila is the fourth, and Him is the fifth. Question number seven. What was today's Ramadan cuisine? Mini pizza, mantu, menemen, lentil soup. It 
was a delicious man with onions. Let's continue. Vehbi Chokavji is in the first place, Hilm is the second, Esti is the third, Sarhat is the fourth, and Umra is the fifth. Question number eight. Which prophet was mentioned in today's lives of prophets? Hazrat Adam, Hazrat Hamza, Hazrat Yusuf, Hazrat Yunus. Hazrat Yusuf is the correct answer. Rehbi Chokavja is in the first place, Hilm is the second, Este is the third, Amara is the fourth, and Azra is the fifth. Question number nine. Hazrat Yusuf's shirt was torn from the front, showing that Hazrat Yusuf was innocent. Is it true or false? The correct answer is false. Rehbi Chokavji is in the first place, Him is in the second, S is third, Hikmet is fourth, and Ramesa is fifth. Question number 10. Why was the Quran given to be our low prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? To teach and show us what is the best, to teach and show us what is the worst of humanity, to lead us into the wrong path, to tell us about the rights everyone has. To teach and show us what is the best. Him is in the first place, Vehbi Chokavji is in the second, Remesa in third, Ikmet fourth, and Burhanri is fifth. Last question, guys. What toy was on the table beside our terrific host Zainab and Ihsan? Ping pong, turtle, giraffe, hook action figure. It is a turtle. Let's check out our final scoreboard. Third, Rumeisa is the third. Vehbi Chokavji is in the second. And him is in the first place. Congrats, guys. Don't forget to send your screenshot if you're up 10. Congrats to winners of the day. It's time to say goodbye for now. See you tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Take care and happy starts, everybody. Goodbye. Bye.